Hello again, and welcome to the ninth of 31 2019 NHL Draft Profiles here at Scouching. Today we're looking at the Vegas Golden Knights, who have been one of my favorite drafting teams to track since their inception a couple of years ago. They started out their draft by taking a player who had absolutely no business being there at the 17th overall pick in Peyton Krebs. Let me be clear, it's an Achilles injury that was a partial tear, and that's less than ideal. However, Achilles injuries are very straightforward to fix and are perfectly reasonable to expect a full recovery. It might push him back a year from the NHL, but I do think that it really doesn't hinder his development. So getting a player this good at 17th overall is really a nice pickup for the Vegas Golden Knights. And when you look at some of the players that went off the board before Vegas, they could have gone off the board and drafted some different players, something they might have needed a bit more immediately, but at the same time, the Vegas Golden Knights are a great example of just drafting the best player available and dealing with lineup needs later. It's perfectly reasonable to think that in a year or two years or three years, the Vegas Golden Knights are looking to contend and might look at moving a Peyton Krebs to get a bigger asset that has a better track record in the NHL. I'm not saying that's likely, and personally, Peyton Krebs is a player that I hang on to and see where he ends up, but at 17, it's a great pickup, and he's a great asset moving forward. However, at 41, the Vegas Golden Knights made a pick that I really wouldn't have made in that slot in Caden Korzak. I think there are underrated offensive tools, and as a big, mean defensive defender, he does have some nice pieces. But I really feel like there were better players in this range that the Vegas Golden Knights could have capitalized on. It's a big swing, both physically and metaphorically, so we'll see where it ends up, but it really wasn't a pick that I would have made. However, at 79, they picked a player that would have been a perfectly reasonable swing, at 41 in Pavel Dorofiev, so I guess all things kind of come out in the wash. Some people were surprised to see Dorofiev slip this far, but frankly, I'm not particularly surprised. He was punching well below his weight class in the MHL this year in the weaker conference in that league. His KHL time was solid, but overall I just felt like there was always something more to Pavel Dorofiev's game that just didn't come out very often. He's got great skill with his stick, he can really control pace of play, he's creative offensively, he can shoot it really well, he gets to dangerous areas. I think there's a huge ceiling for Dorofiev. I just don't know if he's going to achieve it. He's going to need to be patient, he's going to need to hit another gear with his skating more often, but it is there, so I do like the pickup where they got him for Vegas. At 86, they took Leighton Ahak, a defenseman who I really didn't have a lot of viewing time of, so I'm not really comfortable giving him a very detailed report. But when you look at his analytical profile, I can't help but feel like this is a reach at 86. Now, they did take a similar profile player in Stanislav Demin last year, so I'm not going to really write off the Vegas' ability to scout the Junior A leagues in Canada, so I do think that there is potential here but it isn't really a name I really had on my list at 86. At 110, they took Ryder Donovan, who's a big center with a pretty good shot, and I caught a few games of his over the year. I never came away nearly as impressed as some other people were, but I do think this is about the right slot for him. He certainly produced pretty well and had a pretty good playoff in Minnesota, so there is an interesting profile here. And big centers with size, teams can't seem to get enough of them, so who knows. After Donovan, Vegas took Isaiah Seville, who I think is a really smart, athletic goaltender who I did find put himself out of position quite a bit and got away with a very, very talented team in front of him. However, he did stop a lot of pucks, didn't let a tremendous amount behind him, and I like that in a goaltender to say the least, so it's going to be interesting to see where he goes. He just always struck me as a goaltender that was really athletic and relied on athleticism and looked smaller than he was in the net. So if that changes in the years coming, remains to be seen, but he's a pretty decent swing where they took him, I think. After they went with the goaltender, they went with a player that I really didn't have on a draft list if I was an NHL team, and Marcus Kelly and Kelly. Now he's got a lot of skill for someone his size, and he does have good goal scoring instincts, so that does take him a long way. I just felt like he was a bit more of a passenger on his line with Martin Pospisil and Bobby Brink. I feel like there's an interesting project here as a complementary player, but I really didn't see the upside, the skating ability, the intelligence just the overall creativity that I really like to see in prospects. He could be an interesting complimentary player one day, but I'm not totally sure this is the best pick at 139 long term. And with 141, the Vegas Golden Knights went with Mason Primo. He's big, there's an NHL bloodline. I mean, I wouldn't have picked him, but an NHL team was sure to pick a player like Mason Primo, so who knows? Nothing really jumps off the page with him to me, except for how big he is and who his parents are, so I don't really know what else to say. So if you've watched Scouting Reports, we're taking that rating and putting it in these videos, where the number's going to indicate the overall potential I see with the group of prospects the team drafts, and the letter's going to indicate the overall likelihood of reaching that potential for the group as a whole. And for as much as I loved the Vegas Golden Knights taking Krebs and taking a flyer on Dorofiev, 
I can't really help but give them anything better than a 2C. I think Peyton Krebs has all the potential in the world to be an absolute steal at 17, but the rest of their draft really strikes me as a long-term project, drafting a lot of size, a lot of guys who didn't really show up super well on paper, and it's going to be interesting to see if any of these players really develop into anything. I'm not totally sure, but I'm not really going to write off any draft class this year really right away from the draft. I just felt like a lot of their picks were weak swings for a team known for taking really big swings on some lesser known names. So that's it for the Vegas Golden Knights recap, and the next one we're going to be looking at the New Jersey Devils. If you liked the video, be sure to click all the buttons you see below me so you never miss another one. If you really liked it, you could support us on Patreon where you get access to drafted and undrafted eligible spreadsheets, private chat rooms, and plenty of other goodies. Or you could pick up some merchandise from the Scoutware shop. All the links are in the description below. So that's it and thanks for watching, and I hope you join me in the next one profiling the New Jersey Devils.